Hello, hello everyone. Uh, let's get started with the last talk, screen shake. Uh, yeah, no pressure. <laughs> better be good, better be good. No. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I'll let uh, Ojihiro take over. He's the creator of Downwell. You might have heard of it. Pretty good game. No. Uh, it's got a great talk tile. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, oh, fuck. Okay. Hello. Hello. Uh, my name is Ojiro. I am Japanese. I'm based in Tokyo, and um, I'm an independent game developer. I am proud to be introducing myself as a game developer now, but not less than two years ago, I was something completely different. I was, um, I was still attending university, and there I was actually studying classical singing, which is a little bit different from video games. And um, actually, even before university, I was measuring and singing in high school. So adding it up, I was practicing and studying classical singing for six years before I decided to just change course drastically and get into uh, video games. And... Um, it was in March of 2014 that I decided I'd actually start developing games. And without any knowledge or experience in programming or anything like that, I just um, decided to jump right in. And so, and one year and six months later, I released a game called Downwell. It was released on iOS, Android, and PC. And um, yeah, I'll play a trailer of the game now, just so you guys know what the game is like. Just in case you don't, you haven't seen it before. So the game is about going down a well, wearing guns for shoes. Okay, um, hang on. Now, uh, I don't have that much experience in game development. As I said, I've only been doing this for two years, so I don't have a grand point to make in this talk, nor do I have any like game design philosophy that I can share. I only have those in really vague state. I haven't put it into words yet. So rather, this talk is just going to be about, um, I'm just going to be talking about what my experience for the past two years have been like, and just how I, how I managed to get started with game development and release a, well, what I would consider to be a decently well-received game in two years. <laughs> so I have loved playing games all my life, ever since I can remember. And it started with a SNES that my parents had. And um, my parents weren't much of a gamer or anything, but for some reason they had great games like Super Metroid and Donkey Kong Country in their collection. I, stu I still have no idea why they had those games. They supposedly bought the console for just playing Tetris on, but um, for some reason they had Super Metroid and stuff. And after SNES, I would go on to playing um, Nintendo 64, then a PS2. And um, I loved playing games, so it was naturally my childhood dream was to become a game developer. But quite early on, I discovered that game development 
required a thing called programming. And um, so looking at movies and TVs and stuff, I kind of got the idea that programming was a thing about where you like put numbers and stuff into it. Like I basically imagined programming to be one of those like you've seen Matrix, right? Yeah. Like all that green screen and like there's numbers and shit and like you have to decode it and I thought program programming was kind of like that. And I kind of gave up on it then because I couldn't imagine myself coping with that. It was really just felt super counterintuitive. Like I had imagined that you could just draw a picture and slap it onto the screen and make games happen, but it wasn't like that. So I kind of gave up on it then. But because I still desperately wanted to be in the game development scene, at the, around, at the age of around 13, I decided I'd become a composer, a video game composer, because for some reason I thought composing would be easier than programming. And um, I played around with free music composition software and stuff, but I just couldn't figure it out. And um, rather than just trying harder to um, figure the software out, I decided to blame it all on my like lack of musical theory knowledge. And um, I went on to entering a high school that was big in music education. And uh, so actually, with high schools in Japan, I I'm not sure if it's the same for any other country, but um, with high schools, you kind of get to choose whichever high school you want to go to. And like there are like levels, like some high school might be really smart, like have a bunch of smart students. My one might be really dumb. And um, you, uh, you would have to take like an entrance exam and they will filter out with like unworthy students and stuff. And um, there was one high school in my town that was really big in music and yeah, I decided to go there. But um, the entrance exam required the students to be able to perform a musical instrument so this was a kind of high school that kids, like kids who had been playing the piano or the violin and their entire lives would go to. And I had none of that. So prior to the entrance exam, I went to the high school and asked the teachers there how I could get in. Like I really wanted to just study music theory stuff, and, but I can't play any instrument. What should I do? And they told me maybe I should sing because they figured that it would be the easiest thing to start out with, and um, it didn't take much time to get decent at it. So I decided to start singing, and um, it was just like that. <laughs> and um, very soon it turned out that I was relatively decent at singing. Um, I discovered that my vocal cord was somewhat fit for classical singing and stuff, and um, I got into that high school and I started getting more focused with singing because I was getting decent grades at it and um, yeah the music teachers were getting excited and stuff as well and um, yeah by the time I graduated from high school I had completely forgotten why I went to, went to that school in the first place and I kind of forgot that I wanted to compose for games and after high school I would go on to entering the what is called the best music university in Japan, measuring in singing. And I was kind of full of myself then because I believed that I was talented at singing. But after studying there for like three years, I kind of started to wonder if that was actually what I wanted to do. And it wasn't long before I realized that I was only doing it because I could and I was good at it not necessarily because I wanted to do it. And uh, I asked myself the hypothetical question of, if I could become anything in the world, what would I want to become? And I found that my childhood dream was still very much there and I just wanted to make video games. I didn't care to become the greatest opera singer or anything like that. And so for my fourth year at university, I decided to take less classes and just stay home and focus on um, studying how to make games. And around that time I found an article written by Rami Ismail of Flambier called Game a Week, Getting Experienced at Failure, in which it basically advised aspiring game designers to make one game per week, every week. 
to um, to get a lot of game design experience in a short time. And I got hold of one of the more popular game development tools called the Game Maker Studio, and I started working on this exercise. And Game Maker was really abundant in tutorials and stuff. There was a a whole bunch of tutorials on YouTube, and it was really easy to get started out with. And immediately, I was having a blast um, making the simplest things, like a box that moved in the direction of the arrow being pressed. And every time I managed to make something happen on the screen, I was just super amazed, because I grew up thinking that game development would be something that I would never be able to do, and there I was making boxes happen. <laughs> and yeah, um, <coughs> so yeah, it was just super exciting to find out how familiar in-game stuff worked in code, like jumping and gravity and stuff. I never imagined it would be, it could be like described in numbers, but like, yeah, I started to get a hold of how programming worked and stuff. And it was just super fun for me to go on, and I went on making 12 games for the next 12 consecutive weeks. And here are some screenshots of those games. Might be hard to tell what's going on here, but this was a basic platform I made on my first week. It had like wall jumps and double jumps and stuff. The second week was an infinite runner. Fourth week, this is a rock, paper, scissors kind of simulation game where the scissors is um, beating paper. Um, my sixth week, this was a tower defense kind of game. So I, I am like obviously getting better at doing stuff. On my seventh week, I made a game about shooting down planes. My tenth week, this was a puzzle game that was really not fun. And um, on my thirteenth week, I started working on what would become the prototype of Downwell. And after working on this for a week, I felt like this game had potential like none, no other games that I did in my prior weeks. And so I decided to end my Game of Week exercise there and continue working on this prototype. And after I implemented one of the key mechanics of the game, which is the gun boots, where if you press jump while you're still in the air, you would shoot downwards, I got super excited because the game started becoming legitimately fun. And up until that point, I had only kept the games, all the games I made to myself and my two closest friends. And I had never like shown it to anybody else, but with Downwell, I kind of gained the confidence to show it at an indie meetup event in Tokyo. I was super nervous about going there, but um, after I showed the game there, people, all the game devs there was like, this, this game is actually really good, man. And like, I was super happy that day, and I gained even more confidence. So I started to like post GIF, GIF, animated screenshots on Twitter, and <laughs> yeah, GIF, GIF, yeah. <laughs> um, and one of the screenshots got retweeted around, and through retweets and retweets, it got, it ended up getting seen by one of the guys at a publisher called Devolver Digital, and they sent me a reply asking what the game was about, and I got super excited because I was a huge fan of these guys. And um, I immediately replied, uh, <laughs> I immediately replied, wow, Devolver Digital, hello, my game is called Downwell. It's about descending down a well wearing guns for shoes. I had that pitch like in my head all the time, so I just like replied with that. And yeah, after a brief conversation, they were like, cool, email us, we'd love to try it out. And I sent them a build of the game. They tried it out and uh, Soon after, they asked if I wanted to work with them, and I was like, hell yeah. And so yeah, I had been a huge fan of the games that they had been putting out, so it was just a super cool thing to have their name in my game. But also, as a publisher, they provided me financial support, which was the, um, which is development fund, which is basically the cost of living for the duration of the development. And yeah, before they scooped me up, I was prepared to be working part-time jobs and then working on a game in my free time. And I was really like prepared to be doing that for maybe the next two or three years until I came up with a decent idea. So I never expected that things would go this well, this quickly. So yeah, I was super happy about that. 
And I also decided to drop out of the university around then because I deduced that I probably won't be going back to opera singing ever. And um, also having worked with Devolver Digital would mean a lot more on resume should I choose to apply for another game development studios in the future. And around this time, I submitted my game to IGF under student awards as I was still technically a student. <laughs> although I wasn't going there anymore. And this wasn't really in confidence that my game was good enough to be nominated or anything. It was more about just, I just wanted to see my game um, listed among other submitted games. I just wanted to get in the, this mindset that my game was out there. It's, it's kind of hard to describe, hard to explain, but I was really not expecting to get nominated or anything. And. Um, on the morning of the announcement, it was about 3 o'clock in the morning in Japan, and I was asleep, but um, a friend of mine messaged me saying that, man, you're nominated for IGF, and I, I read that, and I was really sleepy, so I didn't really feel anything. I, I, was, I felt like I was dreaming or something, so I just went back to sleep, and um, I woke up, and I checked if the message was still there, and it was, and I was kind of happy then, but yeah, it was kind of slow like that. And so with this nomination, I had a reason to attend GDC in San Francisco for the award ceremony. And with GDC, I expected GDC to be about going to talks, taking notes, and going to expos and like doing business stuff, but it was nothing like that. Obviously, they do have that stuff, but it was more about connecting with people, like going to parties and stuff. And um, yeah, I feel like this might be especially so with indie devs because I hear that a lot of indie devs who go to GDC, they don't even buy a pass and they just hang out in the park outside. And I think that's, that might be the best way to spend GDC because I met so many people last GDC and it was really um, worthwhile for me just meeting people. and. It was at one of the parties in GDC that I would end up meeting Eirik and Jonas, who would end up doing the music and the sound design, sound effects for my game. Obviously, I knew both of them because I was a super huge fan of them. Well, Eirik worked on games like Spelunky and Ridiculous Fishing, and Jonas did the sound effects for Nuclear Throne and Broforce. And it was at one of the Devolver Digital's parties that I met them, and I was like, well, I'm a huge fan, and I just showed them my game, and they were like, "Oh, this is pretty cool. Like, maybe I could, we could work on this." Ha ha. And I was, I was like, I thought they were being polite. I thought they were just like saying that as a nice gesture. And I was like, "Oh, thank you very much," but didn't really think much of it. But afterwards, they emailed me saying, "So, what about that?" Huh? I was like, "Whoa, are you seriously gonna work on my game?" And yeah, so that's basically how they ended up working on it. Um, yeah, working with them was obviously super amazing as they would go way beyond my expectations with, uh, and create crazy good assets and go way beyond, like, uh, they would do stuff, they would suggest new ideas around the audio side that I could have never come up with and they just made the game so much better. And after showing the game at GDC and PAX East afterwards. The game was getting covered on gaming news sites like Kotaku and Polygon, and um, I had two of the big names in the indie scene, these two, and I also had Devolver Digital backing me up, and at that point, I had maybe half of the game done, and I started getting super nervous because I was getting much attention from all over the place, the, the game was getting much attention from, from all over the place, and I had these really talented people working with me, and so in that alone, I expected that upon releasing the game, regardless of the quality, it would probably get quite a amount, like, uh, get decent amount of attention. So that meant that if I, if the, if the game ended up sucking, um, many people would remember me as the fraud that failed, that, that didn't live up to expectations despite having like the best possible support in many fronts. 
And I just realized that I had set myself up for quite a hurdle for my first ever release. This, this thought stuck with me and I became overly careful about every decision I made with the game design. And eventually I became a bit depressed and the development came to a halt for like maybe two months that time. And I kept Irik and Jonas waiting and I had to ask the publisher Devolver for, um, to delay the game. The game was initially planned to be released around July, but I asked, I asked them to delay it to September. Yeah, and the thing I learned about making games then was that you get too used to playing your own game that you kind of lose track of what's fun about your own game anymore. And I started to not be able to enjoy my game. I started feeling like there was really no point. And it was just super dumb game and stuff. I never did find a way to get out of that thought, but I did have playtesters assuring me that the game was quite decent. So I just decided to believe their words and um, ignore my own negative thoughts, really. Um, so after a bit of troubling times, I eventually came out of it and got some much needed progress in development. The set release date was nearing at that point. And even though I think, um, even though I think Devolver would have let me delay the game even more if I asked, I also had barely any money in the bank account left at that point. I only had like an equivalent of 40 euros in the bank account. So I was really, yeah, going broke. So I had to finish and release the game and just hope that it'll sell. And there was a lot more that I could have done and I sh would have done with the game if I had the time, but um, I think that's the problem with independent games. Without strict date or timing in which you have to release, finish and release the game, you really can go on polishing the game forever. If you start looking for places in the game that you could polish, you will just like never stop finding stuff. So I was kind of fortunate that I had the money problem because it forced me to f release the game then. And... Um, <coughs> Hang on. So, yeah, at that point I was really only concerned about not letting down the people that trusted me and worked with me, like Eric and Jonas, they had done a super amazing job with the sounds and Devolver had been super supportive for really a no-name developer with like no past games. So, yeah. Um, I was really nervous about the release and came the release day. Um, I thought I'd be nervous about the moment of the launch, but really I was just too tired from all the crunching to feel much of anything. I was just glad to be over and done with it and out with it. And the launch went really well. It created a bit of buzz on social media. It actually trended on um, Japanese Twitter. And the game sold well enough and went on to recouping the entirety of the development fund in just three days after launch. And some good reviews started popping up and everyone seemed to be enjoying the game so I was just super glad it turned out all right. Um, the game ended up getting 91 on Metacritic for iOS and 84 for PC. So yeah, I, I never expected that people would like the game so much. Oh shit, I... Oh, that was a bit short, wasn't it? Um, so, so yeah, I guess, I guess that's the story of Downwell. I am amazed at how lucky I got with certain things like getting picked up by Devolver and meeting the right people at the right timing. But above all, I feel that it's amazing that we live in a time where my story is a possibility. Like making games has never been so much easier and accessible and in fact I managed to make a game from zero knowledge in two years so I just wanted to share my story in hopes that it might inspire uh, aspiring game developer or 
rather just game developer in general out there. Thank you. <laughs> When I rehearsed back in my hotel, it took about like 45 minutes to talk, but somehow it ended up super short. I'm sorry. <laughs> Question. Sure. Did you sing for us? No, no way. No way. I'm not going back to that. <laughs> um, I was wondering, considering you do have a musical background, um, the fact that you collaborated with um, Ivory and the other guy, was it something that just grew out of the opportunity of you know, having met them, or um, were you ever considering doing music for yourself? Yeah, I did consider making music for myself, and I really wanted to do everything by myself, because, you know, cave story and stuff, like, I had the dream to become, like, not become, but, like, just make a game all by myself and, like, take credit for everything. But, um, and so I did try messing around with um, music composition software again, but I just couldn't get anything done. And I was talking to Devolver about that, actually. I was like, I'm having, a, uh, having trouble making music. Uh, and, and then GDC happened, and I met Eric. So there was that opportunity there, definitely. And yeah, it just started. It grew out from there. So I, I don't regret, like, I did want to do everything for myself, but I am super glad it turned out this way, because I reckon Jonas has done such a great work that and they made the game so much so much better so yeah i i'm glad that i didn't like stick with my ego and yeah work with them would you like to make video games in the future yes yeah i i definitely want to just i'm just not very good at it right now so i have to practice yeah so what is your plan for the future then? Um, I want to continue making games as, as long as I can live off it. If I fail, like if I fail at some point, if I go too, too broke, I might just go into a company or something. Yeah. <laughs> so how do you start then? How do you start your future? How do you start making more games? Are you, have you started? Um, not yet, but I'm hoping to start the game a week thing again after i've settled down with downwell i still there's still some bugs with downwell especially the android version so i have to um, follow that up and like fix those stuff but after i'm done with all that um, i'm hoping to start with game a week again i hope i come up with an idea as good as downwell's was yeah it is it's true. <laughs> it is coming soon. Um, I'm not working on the port. Devolver is handling that, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure when it's coming, but hopefully soon. <laughs> yeah, I love the Vita. I love the Vita. It's got so many cool games. I just hope it would become bigger, you know. Yeah, for sure. I mean, like, <laughs> Downwell turned out too good, I think. I, I never expected it would have this kind of reaction. I, I did, I was, like, making the game that I, w I was content with, but, yeah, I feel like the main mechanic, the gumboots mechanic, was really good, I think, and I am just not confident that I would be able to come up with something as intuitive and like cool as that so that, that that is a pressure there but hopefully hopefully i can come up with something yeah thank you
so we have exactly 40 minutes of a break right now and at 5 p.m. there will be a screening of thank you for playing so come back here for the movie thank you